Yo, what's up? Welcome to another build guide. So this is my last build of Arc Nemesis League. That's why I wanted to do a... Again, most of times I do that, but... Non-meta, uh, maybe a fantasy build. Because I haven't touched um, Eternal Shroud in this league, 3.17. I wanted to do something with that. Uh, as promised, I tried to do lots of melee builds this league, as usual, but non-meta melee builds, as you maybe you already uh, watched those. So if you haven't, uh, check my channel, I have lots of cool melee build guides. I believe Glacial Hammer is one of the popular ones these days. Uh, so I want to also try Wild Strike, another skill that I haven't uh, even played ever. If you don't know, uh, I played this game maybe like over... Seven years, maybe six years, and I haven't uh, played something with that. Uh, simply because it is not a good skill normally. So I wanted to do some abusing mechanics as usual uh, to make a non-meta skill a viable, let's say. That's why I picked Eternity Shroud. So this let me just explain how Eternity Shroud works if you are not familiar. If you already know what you are doing, you don't even need to watch the guide, obviously. Uh, but let's just explore the item first. Eternity Shroud. Gain 5% elemental damage as extra cast damage per shaper item equipped and enemy uh, hits ignore enemy monster cast resist if all equipped items are shaper items. This means everything your character equips in your inventory screen except the flasks obviously no flasks and uh, there are no shaper influence flasks as far as I know. So your weapons, helmet, body armor, body armor is already shaper influence because that is how the unique item drops from uber elder. Uh, obviously your glows boost all of those your jewelry not the jewels on the talent tree we don't care about those so anything your character equips in your inventory screen except the flasks all right uh, five percent is the maximum if you want to buy a corrupted chest piece i picked what plus one resistances because it was super cheap no one uh, buys these kind of items uh, it turns out is not a popular item because it is very hard to build around it because as uh, because of th these reasons, your uh, all of your items needs to be shaper influenced. They can be double influenced. Uh, it is fine. That is what we are gonna do on couple of our items. And I am also gonna explain you how to buy some of the items cheaper uh, because of the same reason. Uh, but in the end, this build is a little challenge. If you are a new player, maybe you discovered my channel recently. If you are a super newbie player, let's say, do not try this build. You will probably fail waste your time and you will probably uh, stick off the game let's say you know get get sick of this game you are gonna be like uh, this game is hard or whatever no this build is a little hard maybe all right do not try this if you are an experienced uh, player obviously go for that i'm gonna explain how i crafted all of my items so let's just also check the uh, gems maybe wild strike uh, why i picked this obviously i wanted a non-meta skill so while I was testing uh, armor stacking uh, builds a couple of weeks ago, I obviously tried lots of skills, tried to put uh, some clips. If you haven't checked that, go and watch that by the way, that is another build. Uh, I also tried Wild Strike and it was like uh, very fun. It was a very fun skill because Wild Strike has three different elements. Uh, whenever you attack, you just shoot something random. So if it picks cold, you actually shoot some freezing pulse maybe it has something similar to that some freezing uh, pulses uh, it is actually very good for map clear uh, for fire it doesn't do much i believe it just do, does some explosion i believe on the melee range i'm not i cannot tell because it is very hard to notice it while playing and for the lightning it actually shoots something like arc it also chains there's also a helmet enchant that adds another six chains i believe so maybe it can be better for mapping but for the helmet enchant, I picked Berserk buff effect for more burst boss DPS. Uh, because that was also cheaper to buy. Uh, I just bought the helmet from another player. It was very cheap. I didn't even use a Labyrinth Service uh, booster, let's say. So yeah, you can maybe pick another enchant. Uh, this build can do bossing, obviously, you already watched. But I haven't tried, you know, maybe harder invitations like Feared. Uh, because th most of the DPS comes from burst. You know, Berserk and popping your cooldowns. If you die in those kind of invitations, this is a Berserker, but not a spec of Carnage Berserker. I also haven't used that in this build and also Glacial Hammer build. This is a speed build. Uh, because of those reasons, uh, if you maybe die, you lose all your rage. Uh, and once you enter a boss arena where there are a couple of bosses roaming around, 
it is super hard to generate those rage again you know you need some time uh, without rage you just lose most of your dps and uh, that's why this build maybe is not good for those kind of harder imitations but for any kind of single target Cirrus, maven guardians uh, conquerors obviously the uh, easy papers you know easy imitations uh, like formed twisted it is fine but anything above that you know feared uh, obviously simulacrum you cannot do that with this build so these are not good those are not good for this build this build is also super fun and fast while mapping so this is a super um, yeah it was a very fun mapping character also and that was about it if you can also afford a headhunter it is not even shaper based you don't even need that obviously but if you want to min max the build you can obviously try your luck and maybe try to craft a shaper headhunter if you also want that obviously it is not even needed um that is another fantasy item or a fantasy build uh, so yeah wild strike shoots all kind of projectiles it is a strike skill so you may want to use ancestral call while mapping i just switch it with elemental damage with attack support but if you want to do um reflect maps you all obviously need awaken elemental damage with attacks uh, because it actually makes you immune to elemental reflect and maybe you can also use that instead of Maybe inspiration support, those are the red ones. So just switch, you know, swap ancestral call. If you are mapping or if you are bossing, you know, hoping, uh, just use elemental damage with attacks or inspiration again. So those are the gems that you should uh, consider swapping. Trinity build, because we are dealing all kinds of elements, there are actually some jewels that blocks a certain element for wild strike. That is the same jewel that is being used on elemental heat builds. I am not using those. I'm shooting all kind of three different elements uh, that is where the fun in my opinion uh, for wild strike so it is a trinity build in the end uh, that's why you should also type 50 resonance on your pet of building to calculate your dps um what else to explain nothing much actually just you know totems for uh, more dps while posing or auras determination for armor anger for fire damage um, because I don't have much intelligence, I have enough, but it is not enough for red, uh, actually, aura. Maybe you can also use red if you have more intelligence, if you think that is better. But if you use anger, uh, you can actually use a cheaper Watcher's Eye called, where is that? Spirit Strike Multiplier while affected by anger, and it goes up to 50% multiplier. So this is actually not expensive and also provides huge multiplier. So in that, my choice was anger. This is a Secrets of Suffering build, um, because it is a Trinity build, uh, why not? Uh, that's why we cannot actually Ignite Shield, Freeze or Shock. And that's the reason we are also using Secretor bots, so they can actually chill and shock instead of us. Uh, chill obviously slows, Shock uh, applies damage taken. Because this is a Secret of Suffering build, we uh, instead apply Brittle for more crit. That is how you cap your crit. Even on Cirrus, I, managed, I, I was actually applying... 15 brittle which is cap anything above 10 is enough uh, you just have 100% crit easily scorch for penetration uh, all elements actually it is a fire debuff but it actually is a penetration for every element and sap reduces the damage output of the enemy which is actually good for more defense uh, maybe this will get nerfed i don't know secret of suffering is super powerful on all kind of builds pretty much maybe this will get nerfed in the future we will see um and this was i yeah there are much not much else to explain there is not much else to explain one final thing about the gems then i will just explain the equipment uh, because this is a uh, eternal shroud build uh, most of our damage is actually chaos because the item eternal shroud provides elemental damage as extra chaos per item equipped that's why you may want to stack some wither stacks actually so wither is a debuff that increases chaos damage taken on the enemy um because i have melee totems for buffs i cannot use a wither spell totem setup at the same time that's why i actually used withering touch support on my ancestral protector because those guys actually attack super fast uh right right now in my pet of building their attack speed is 23 attacks per second crazy so i hope they actually apply 15 stacks with withering touch maybe not i just typed 15 on the pet of building maybe it is like 10 stacks i don't know so yeah also make sure you calculate that so withering touch support on your protectors for those wither stacks if they can actually apply that because it has actually a 20 percent chance you know 25 
last event, I believe. A Divergent actually provides another chance. So I just picked Divergent Withering Touch. That was it about that Wither Stacks. Uh, it just increases cast damage taken. Alright, now let's start with the equipment. Uh, this is the important part, obviously. Enough with the explanation of the build. So first of all, before playing this build, I highly suggest you to try buying if they are if they even exist i don't know there, there, there weren't any results when i made this build uh weapons all right uh, just try to buy or craft weapons first if you manage to finish your weapons you are actually good to go because those are the hardest pieces in this build all of the other pieces are actually easier to craft uh, so normally people obviously do not play shaper uh jewel foil those kind of builds uh, maybe you can also play this build with claws. I believe they also work. You don't even need to play Wild Strike, by the way. If you enjoy another skill, maybe non-meta skill, you can also try those. So in the end, good base types are obviously if you want swords, maybe a jeweled foil or another foil that is uh, also fast. A jeweled foil has uh, 1.6 attacks per second. It is a very fast um, sword, actually. Because it is a foil, it also has implicit crit multiplier. That is why it is good. Um, so yeah, if you also maybe want some clothes, try to get something that has the implicit life on hit uh, by attacks. Imperial clove, maybe a Gemini clove, alright? So you can try to craft or buy one of those. If you obviously go for clothes, you may need to change your talent tree. So how to craft this? So first of all, I believe you can craft physical or elemental weapons. Uh, it shouldn't matter that much in the end. Because Wild Strike already converts 100% physical damage to uh, Fire, Cold or Lightning, whatever the damage it is dealing. So in the end, maybe a Physical Sword is even better, I don't know. Uh, because Physical Swords, in my opinion, are harder to craft. Because you probably need at least maybe a 450 Physical DPS Sword or maybe 500 Sword. Uh, the non-Shaper ones are obviously on the market, uh, but they are not cheap, obviously. Maybe like 20 Exalt, I don't know the prices right now. Uh, but it is actually hard to craft on a shaper base because no one does that. So if you want to do that, maybe try that first. Uh, but yeah, in the end I actually uh, wanted to craft elemental swords because they are easier to craft. But you still need some RNG, you cannot craft those fast enough. So here is how to do that. There are a couple of methods, I tried a combination of those and uh, something worked in the end, alright? So one is essence spamming. I'll just put the essence uh, examples on the screen. Something that provides huge flat damage. Obviously, you may want to use a bigger one if you have the budget. So just spam one of these until you hit more elemental damage. You obviously want fire, cold and lightning at the same time, pretty much. Uh, on the suffix, you can maybe ho uh, hope for an attack speed. But uh, if you manage to get super nice prefixes, higher tier elemental damages maybe, you can just fix suffixes later on. Um, or use fossils again the examples are going to be on the screen or elemental tags maybe uh, this actually lets you put element you know whenever you use this you pretty much solve some see something all right on the item but most of the time the tears are super shit even if you use that lucky fossil i believe it is shudder they are on the screen all right just check the pictures even if you use that you let's say use 10 fossil combinations you still get nothing it happens so in the end, Essence might be better, I don't know. I believe I craft one of these with Essence. Uh, that Havok Bane foil, I believe, that is with Essence. The other one is, I believe, with Fossils, if I remember correct. Because I crafted these with a couple of friends, I just uh, bought them swords, you know. I just put them on the guild stage and I was like, okay, just try this, alright, maybe you are luckier. And I believe uh, one of my friends crafted one of the foils, so maybe that is that, that, that was a Fossil craft in the end. So yeah, these are the methods. Uh, if your suffixes suck, uh, later on you can use harvest craft maybe. Keep prefix, uh, reroll suffix, or put suffix, uh, what's that? Prefixes cannot be changed from crafting bench yourself. Then go and buy reforge a rare uh, with, what is that? Uh, speed modifiers, something like that. Or maybe crit modifiers. To put some crit, crit multiplier. Maybe put the attack speed yourself on the bench. So maybe use some harvest craft in the end to fix those suffixes. You obviously want attack speed. Brit isn't that important because you can you can easily apply brittle, uh, which easily caps your crit strike chance actually. So attack speed is actually number one stat on your suffix. 
After that, double damage. If you still have an open suffix, you can put that yourself, I believe. Uh, if I am not mistaken. Or you can use Ace Link. Here for whatever it is called. Uh, from Katarina's... Um, what is that? Mastermind. You know, uh, safe house, room, whatever it is called. Uh, you obviously need to buy that from another player, maybe. And hope for a good Veil modifier, maybe. You can also do that in the end for some maybe double damage, attack speed, those kind of stuff. So this is how to finish the weapons crafts. Uh, aim for at least 500 something elemental DPS weapons. Uh, my weapons were close to 700 actually. But anything above 500 should enough to play the build. Uh, because DPS is enough. Uh, unless you try to do some crazy shit. If you mainly want to play this build maybe for boss uh, mapping. With maybe a, even a headhunter something like that. Uh, 500 elemental damage, de uh, de what is that, weapons are simply overkill actually for mapping, alright? And that was it, these were the hardest pieces. Again, you can maybe craft clothes, uh, maybe take some life on it for a tankier character. Clothes can also work, but not sure about the DPS, you may need to change your also talent tree, because I picked some sword nodes on the talent tree. So yeah, consider doing that if you know what you are doing. Helmet. Uh, so for the enchant I picked Berserk buff effect uh, because I wanted more DPS on boss fights obviously but also uh, because this was actually on the market. People for some reason craft this, I don't know, this was cheap. Uh, if you want another enchant, maybe something with Wild Strike. If you want to play this build mostly for mapping, there is actually Wild Strike chains uh, 6 additional times. It is the uh, That is only that lightning portion I believe because that is the chaining um, Wild Strike actually. Fire and Cold cannot chain as far as I know because they have different tags. So Wild Strike is a crazy skill. The name already says it, you know, Wild Strike. Uh, so yeah, you can maybe also get that or any other enchant uh, from a Labyrinth service provider. Maybe just give your helmet later on. So that is something that you can work on later on. So how to craft this? Because Blizzard crowns, uh, as far as I know, cannot be 85 item level these days after they change the Atlas. Yeah, you cannot actually make them... You can make them shape for influence, but you cannot get nearby enemies take elemental damage. Because that is a modifier that comes from at least 85 item level helmets. So just check PoE database website uh, to, you know, confirm. If maybe I am just uh, telling something wrong, it sometimes happens, you know. I can also make mistakes, but I 85 item level should be the item level as far as I know. So just check Path of Exile PoE database website, alright. Um, before crafting anything. So you want elemental nearby enemies take elemental damage plus something else if you want to spend more obviously. So because of that reason uh, Blizzard Crown on a Shaper influence cannot roll that because the item level is lower. You can actually make Blizzard Crown another influence. Uh, in this case it is Warlord. I just uh, used Warlord Exalt Orb and that was it. Used Alteration Orbs to get Crit Multiplier and that helmet was ready. I also bought another helmet, another base type, it doesn't matter, that is the helmet we are gonna burn actually, alright? We are gonna destroy that helmet in the process. A random helmet with Shaper Influence, at least 85 item level, craft elemental damage taken, nearby enemies, whatever, with alteration orbs, or any other method that if you think something is better, alright? Then use Evaction Orb on that helmet and click Blizzard Crown last. That way you will just uh, destroy that uh, wrong base type. Get that nearby enemies take elemental damage mode and uh, just transfer it to Blizzard Crown. That's it. Crit multiplier plus elemental damage taken on the same item. Uh, even uh, the Blizzard Crown have actually a lower item level. You, it can still get that nearby enemies take elemental damage modifier because you used a Vaconer Orb. Otherwise, you cannot roll it normally because the item level won't allow it. That is how to craft that. If you have some maybe open prefixes, put life or melee strike range. Melee strike range is important on wild strike because normally the gem doesn't have any. Uh, because it is a non-meta skill that GGG probably forgot about. They actually forgot to add melee strike range in wild strike. Uh, they actually did that to dual strike and some other skills a couple of leagues ago I believe. But wild strike doesn't have anything. So if you do not invest into any melee strike range it is actually shit. You cannot even hit something in front of you. The strike range is just shit alright. Uh, you definitely need to put that on your maybe helmet. You can also put that on your gloves. I believe also amulet. So try to put a couple of those on your items. Because they are all going to be rare items. Anyways this is a shaper based uh, build. Shaper influenced build. 
And also maybe you can also get some uh, strike range on talent tree. I haven't done that, but there are a couple of um, locations that you can actually do that. All right. Uh, maybe consider spending a couple of extra instead of some DPS. Maybe make sure you get some extra strike range in the end. All right. Don't forget that. Otherwise, the skill feels shit, unfortunately. And this was about the helmet. Who knows? It's a melee build, but uh, some of the uh, effects while strike shoots, let's say, are actually projectile, I believe. Uh, but I just wanted for the melee damage. That's why I picked spiked gloves. So maybe you can also use gripped gloves, but maybe spiked gloves are better because most of the damage should be melee, I hope. <laughs> uh, I haven't uh, what's that investigated that much. Uh, just check uh, Gamepedia. If you think grip gloves are better, if you think most of the damage is projectile, but I think not. Most of it should be uh, melee, actually. Because you hit with melee, then shoot something. That is how the skill works. Some of that uh, shooting stuff are actually projectiles. Like that cold, I believe. I believe that is the only projectile. The lightning shouldn't be a projectile. It actually chains, but it is not a projectile, I guess. As That is a little stupid, but there are some examples like that. Arc is also a project, uh, what's that, chaining skill, it is a spell, but it is not a projectile. So yeah, welcome to Piri. Uh, so yeah, spike load in the end, uh, shaper influenced, item level shouldn't matter that much. I just used essence of greed for some good life. Just uh, used a couple of those until I hit some resistances. Then uh, I just get Aisling craft for some, actually attack speed, those kind of. Uh, some extra DPS, let's say, because I just wanted to spend extra. This was my last build. I just get attack speed while focused. That is a good DPS uh, cooldown. You don't have to do that, but if you just want to burn some extra currency, because there is not much else to put on your gloves, actually. Maybe you can hope for some um, attack speed normally, you know, that is obviously going to be lower, something like 10%, 15%, maybe. Uh, or maybe accuracy. So make sure you craft a gloves uh, suited for your needs, let's say, uh, in the end. I just wanted some fun, that's why I picked some Aisling modifiers instead. Again, put melee range, that is super important. Boots. So normally on Hunter bases, there is Tailwind for more DPS, obviously, because it provides speed. Uh, that is something that I wanted, obviously. So funny thing about these boots, you also want, obviously, Shaper influence, so you normally need to use Awakener Orb. But crafting boots are super um, hard, actually. It is a lot of RNG because you need movement speed, life. Uh, otherwise, the boots is gonna be shit, probably. That is why I actually searched for Shaper Influence, Hunter Influence at the same time. Put Tailwind and just uh, check the results. So normally, people use this for cast stone crit builds. Uh, because Shaper bases have cooldown. So they also want that Hunter bases Tailwind. They actually use that um, Awakened Lord, maybe get some movement speed, some good boots. But for some reason, people are just maybe too greedy, let's say. They use maybe Enulment Orb to get rid of something to put more resist, those kind of stuff. And sometimes they actually annul cooldown. So if they do that, the boot is actually shit. You know, it goes to trash. That's why they actually sell it for way cheaper. So that's why I actually bought something like that. As you can see, these boots have double influence, but there is no shaper influence on this right now. Because cooldown doesn't work for this build, we don't need it. That is for another build actually, because people brick those items with, with Enulment Orb, they actually sell it for cheaper. So that is the thing that I picked. If you want a Shaper modifier, maybe try crafting your own boots. But again, getting movement speed, life, those kind of stuff at the same time is super hard on boots. Boots are probably one of the hardest pieces to craft, in my opinion. Or cheaper, let's say. You most of times need to use maybe Aisling Craft, Enulment Orbs. Those kind of stuff. You can actually brick the boots like this example. Uh, that's why they are going to be cheaper to buy in my opinion. There are also not much stuff to put on your boots for DPS anyways. So yeah, I highly suggest you to maybe try to get one of these. Maybe do some bargaining with the guy. Because they probably cannot sell those for um, more expensive, let's say. Because they don't have cooldown anymore. So these are the boots options, you know, these are the stats on your boots. Tailwind, movement speed, resist, maybe life, that's it. Uh, for the enchant, attack speed if you have killed recently is nice for mapping, but this character is super fast anyways, you can skip enchant, or maybe get a defensive one in the end. Amulet. So first of all, uh, people do shaper farm, those kind of stuff all the time, that's why uh, there are actually lots of results on uh, market for maybe amulet and rings. 
So maybe for jewelry you can just pick something from another player. You don't even have to craft it, maybe, let's say. I actually bought this from someone else. It was like one or two exalt. It was fairly cheap. Uh, just search for some flat damage, maybe. Old lightning fire, it doesn't matter. If your swords are physical based, maybe if you try to do that and if you think that works, you can also get flat physical because Wild Strike converts all physical to element. So 100% conversion. Uh, so something flat damage, let's say, on your amulet. Crit multiplier is nice. Maybe accuracy or any missing stats. Uh, life, those kind of stuff. Actually, my amulet misses life because I had to put non-channel skills, have minus mana cost. Yeah, you probably want to also lower your mana cost. Uh, so you can actually reserve more stuff. I actually don't have much mana left and I can actually play with that mana because I put mana cost reduction on my amulet and one ring, yeah. So two items in the end, uh, minus 14 mana cost total. Uh, that actually worked for me. There is also replica conqueror efficiency jewel. You can also use that on your talent tree. You still have, if you still need mana, mana cost reduction, all right. So this was the amulet panopticon for more totem effect. Obviously a good boss cooldown. Uh, more boss DPS, let's say. For the rings. So first of all, as you can see, we still don't have any curse. If you want to maybe apply a mark, uh, which is going to be assassin mark, obviously, manually. Uh, or maybe use a mark on it setup if you have some open gem slots. You can use that. But I just wanted more penetration because it is hard to get penetration on a berserker. Normally, this is a melee build. Talent 3 doesn't have much penetration. Um, these items also doesn't have any penetration on those. That's why I wanted to use elemental weakness curse. And I also didn't want to waste any more gem slots. So that's why I skipped assassin mark. Uh, and picked elemental weakness. So elemental weakness is a curse that is on hunter rings. That's why you want a ring with elemental weakness on hunter base. Get a shaper ring, another ring. Uh, I picked lightning damage against shock enemies. There is also cold damage against chilled enemies, I guess. So maybe something that provides DPS on a shaper influence modifier. All right, shaper influence base, shaper modifier. Again, use awaken orb, combine the both uh, to a single ring. And maybe try to put some life, maybe attribute, whatever the character still needs. Maybe try a couple of more if you if your ring actually sucked. Uh, maybe you can also do that. So the, one of the ring in the end should provide that. The other ring doesn't have to be uh, double influenced. It is actually a single shaper influenced ring that I bought for a couple of exalt from someone else. Again, flat cold damage against chill enemies. Elemental damage attacks, resist. Uh, anything that provides DPS, rings are very good, uh, they are a good source to um, stack some DPS actually. Maybe try to uh, spend extra for your rings because they actually make huge difference. This character also needs some intelligence and dexterity, so you may want to put those on your maybe jewelry, jewels, gloves. So those are the uh, pieces to put those. Final item, belt. Obviously if you are mapping you can use a headhunter, but obviously maybe you will have lower resistances. I actually played like that, you know, my lightning resist was like 20 while mapping. But because you are using uh, Headhunter, if you just kill a couple of rares, you will probably gonna have kept resist. Because most rare monsters have actually resist aura, so you can actually keep your resist with Headhunter buffs. Uh, so don't try to keep your uh, resist if you want to use a Headhunter on this build. Also, if you are gonna map mostly with this build and also use a Headhunter, it means that you cannot get that penetration buff that the Eternal Shroud provides. So maybe you can also use a different, let's say a gloves, maybe a boots. So you don't need to make a full set actually for mapping with Headhunter. Anyways, because Headhunter isn't a uh, shaper influenced. Yeah. So maybe you can also skip some of the items and get some other crazy stuff. Maybe if you still need some attributes, do not try to uh, craft a shaper item in the end. If you have a head control right? And that's it. That's a mini tip for you. Uh, if you want to use a sticky mice, obviously this is also what you need to use on boss fights. Because head hunter is pretty much useless. Uh, life resist and elemental damage with attacks are your good uh, options on a belt. So shaper belts. So just buy a sticky mice as shaper influenced. Then use pristine plus prismatic fossil combination. That is how I craft these belts all the time. Um... I try to do a Eternal Shroud build every league and this is how I craft every time. It is actually super easy. It doesn't cost 20 or maybe 30 tries most of the times. Uh, you should craft this uh, with a couple of exalt investment. It shouldn't cost that much, alright? And uh, that's it.
Or you will obviously try to put something uh, in it. Uh, life, maybe lightning damage attacks, gold damage attacks, attack speed, multiplier, corrupted blood immunity is obviously nice. Uh, those are the things that you can put or maybe any missing attributes in that jewel slot. Well, that was it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm not going to show anything in Path of Building. Already showed, uh, explained some of the core gems, those kind of stuff. Explained Secrets of Suffering Jewel. Anyways, they are on the talent tree, so that's why I don't want to explain anything. I also use two rare jewels. Uh, if you have open uh, slots, let's say if your character is high level, also try to get some good rare jewels. So one tip um, about that, because Wild Strike have lots of tags. Fire, cold, lightning, elemental, melee. This is a dual wield skill, so dual wielding, one-handed weapons. So we have lots of tags. So try to get some good crit multiplier combinations. If you don't put life on your jewels, there are actually lots of results, and they are most of times under one exalt with three or four multipliers. Crazy jewels. My character actually has almost 700 crit multiplier, which is insane. So you can also get some of those if you want. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you later. Bye bye.